The use state took is one of the most common hooks you'll use as a developer, so it's important to know how it works. In this video, we're going to take a run through of what the use state took is and three common examples of when you're going to use it in your components. To define the use state hook, all we have to do is import it from React, which we do by opening our braces and typing use state. Let's say we wanted to store a person's age as a state variable in our app. All we have to do is say use state and then open some braces to initialize it. So this is saying I want to create a new state object. We can pass in an initial value, which can be anything, a number, an object, a string, for example. But for this, since we're storing an age, we're going to use a number and we're going to say 20. The use state hook will give us back two things. It'll give us back a variable, which holds the current value, and it will give us a function that lets us update that variable. So to get at these two things, we use the structuring. So we can say const, open our square brackets, and we'll say age, comma, set age is equal to use state. Just like this, so now we have our variable and our function. We can use this just like any old plain variable. So down in our code, we're just gonna display this age um, onto the screen. So we'll say age and then open our curly braces and type age. And then if we hit save, you can see it appears. So it's showing up as 20 because this is what we initialized this state variable as being. So if we wanted to update this age value, all we have to do is call the set age function. So to show this working, we're just going to add a button that calls the function. We're just going to call us increase age. On the on click property, we're going to pass in a function that calls the set age function. Set age, and then we're just going to say age plus one. So anytime the button is clicked, it should increase the age by one. So the other way in which we can update the state is by using what's called a functional update. So inside our set age function, we can pass a function, which gives us access to the previous age or the previous state variable. If you're coming from a class based component, you'll be familiar with this sort of syntax. So it just gives us the previous state value and then we can just use it in our logic here and it'll work the same way. So this, this is good in the case where different components or different parts of your app could be trying to update the same variable at the same time. So it just avoids race conditions and things like that. We're just gonna leave it like this, since this is fine for now. We can have as many hooks as we like in a component. So if we create a new one, and this time we're gonna call it address, and it's gonna hold an object just to show something different. We'll say one of the properties of this address object is address line one. And this is just going to be set to uh, address line one. And then we're just, whoops. And then we're just going to choose town and the town is just going to be town as well. Just like this. So now that we've created that, we can do the same or display the properties from this address state value in our code. So just add a horizontal line to make things a bit easier to see. We'll add a div and then we'll say uh, address line one, open our braces, and then we'll say address dot, since we're accessing an object this time. So this is what this is, an object. And we'll say address line one, so it's auto-completed for me. And we'll just do the same for town. We'll do town, open our braces, and we'll say address dot town. And now if we save this, it should show up here. So updating a state value that is stored as an object is a bit different as React doesn't do any clever merging or anything like that. We need to tell it exactly what we want to save in state. So what I mean is if we go down here and add a button and then this will just be update address and then the on, on click event will take a function that will set address. All this is doing is calling the set address function, which changes the address variable. And what we want to do is pass in an object and then we'll just say, we want to update the town to be new town. So if we save this, the button appears. And then if we click it, you can see it's updated the town value to be new town, but the address line one has disappeared. So that's because when we call the set address function, we passed in a new object, but we did specify what the new address line one was going to be. That means this object completely overwrites whatever is currently in state. To get around this, all we have to do is make a copy of the previous object that is currently in state. And our set address 
function if we just do the spread operator and say address and then a comma. This will take a copy of what's currently in state and then update the town variable with new town and then it just saves the whole thing back into state. So if we save this and try it again, this time the address line one should stay the same as we just made a copy of that and then the town should update to new town. Try this and it works. We can update multiple state hooks at the same time. As an example, we'll create a function called handle update all and this is just going to be an arrow function. And in this, it's just gonna call set age to update the age. Um, and then this is gonna be 34 and it will do set address. And then this is gonna take an object and just update what we currently have up in the address value. So I'll do address line one and I'll just say this is new address line one and the town is going to be new town just like this and down in here what we'll do is we're going to add a button which will be called update all update all and whenever we click it it's going to call our function up here handle update all so now Whenever we click this, it should change the age and change the address to all this new stuff. So that's these things here. And if we click update all, uh, it does. So change the address, the town and the age. So the interesting approach about using this is that the component doesn't re-render twice. It only re-renders -re once through what's called batch updating, which is a clever thing that React has, which knows that you're updating two state values at the same time and that there's no need to re-render the component twice. Before we look at some examples, uh, I'm just going to show you some things that we can't do with hooks. We can't declare a hook inside an if statement or inside a for loop. So if I try to do um, if true, for example, and I wanted to declare this in here, you can see it gives us an error that says react hook use state is called conditionally. React hooks must be called in the exact same order in every component render. So that means hooks can only be defined at the top level and we can't put them inside of if statements and for loops and things like that. So we're just going to take this out again and get rid of this. Okay, so now we're going to look at the first example of where you would tend to use hooks and that is within forms. So we're going to create a form that has a username and a password and we're going to use state hooks just to store the values and see how we can do stuff with those values. So we're going to create a state hook. The first one's going to be called username and we'll initialize this to an empty string. We'll just do the same down in here and it'll be password. And this will be an empty string as well. And then we're gonna create a function that our form is going to call. So we handle form submit, and this is just gonna be a arrow function that will take an event. And we're just gonna use an alert here and a template string to display just what the username and the password is. So we'll do password and then dollar sign like this to password. And then we'll do username and then we'll just open our thing again and do username. Okay, so now we just have to create a very simple form so we'll open a form tag, oops, just like this. And here we're gonna have two inputs and we'll say the value for this one is gonna be equal to username. And anytime this changes, we're going to call the set username function. And we're gonna get the value from the event which gets passed in by the onChange function. So we just do event.target.value, just like this. I will put a label here so we can see what it is. So if I type username and see if there it is, and if we type stuff, that works. So we'll just do the same with the password. And then we'll just do input again, and I will do value. This time is equal to password. And on change will be the same. It's going to take a function. And then this time we're just going to call it set password. And we're going to 
pass in the event dot target dot value to get what the user typed and we get the event from the on change function like that now if we save maybe using a password that's looking good and now we just need a button to submit this form so just a button and type equals submit and then we'll just say submit in here and finally on our form tag we just need to do an on submit and then this is going to call handle form submit that looks good if we type a username and a password and hit submit you can see that this works this is a basic example but it gives you an idea of where you do things like validation or api calls and things like that so the next thing we're going to look at is conditional rendering so for example if you had a modal um or a piece of text or a component that you wanted to only render under certain conditions so we're going to create a state variable that will hold whether we need to show or hide a particular component so do show text and initialize this to false and now down in our code if we add open our braces and type show text and now what we're going to use is a ternary operator so we're going to say if show text is true then we want to show this component which in this case is just going to be some text so hello i am a modal and then we'll close our span tag and just outside that we're going to do a colon and then say no so if show text is true it's going to show this text else it's going to just return null in which case it doesn't render anything so as you can see nothing is shown up here because we have set show text to be false but if we added a button that changes it so say toggle text and we'll do on click and this will take a function and then we're just going to call the set show text function and set it to the opposite of what it currently is so if we click this button that should hopefully appear it's going to set show text to false if it's currently true and it's going to set to true if it's currently false it's false initially but if we click the button it displays the text so it just happens because it changes the state value to true which causes the component to re-render and the second time it re-renders true text is true and it displays the text okay so the last example that we're going to look at is rendering a list of things for example a list of people We'll create a use state variable for this. We'll call it people. And we're going to initialize this to, this to an array of objects. Or each object is going to have some details about a person. So it's going to hold their name and it's going to hold their job. Just like that. So we'll copy this and we'll add a few more objects to this array. Oops. So we just paste a few things in and then format it so it looks nice and then we'll just change the name jenny and claire so now we have three people in our state value and if we wanted to display this list we just jump down to our jsx and we're going to open our braces and then we're going to do people dot map we're going to pass in our function and then we'll do Let's see, um, we'll do a div for each person and then we'll just display some things about them. So we'll say person.name and I will say is a uh, and then person dot uh, job and then we'll save it like this. As you can see down here, it's displayed the details for each of our people. So if we wanted to add a new person to this list, what we'll do is create a button and then we'll call it add person and on click. It's going to accept a function that calls set people. Open our brackets and since set people is an array, we have to pass in an array. What we want to do is use a spread operator to make a copy of the current array. And then we want to add a new person object to it. Open our races and then we'll type name and then we'll say Jim. And then we'll do a comma and then we'll say uh, job. And then we'll say developer as well. So now if we save this and if we click add person, Jim is a developer gets added to the array. 
and then if we keep clicking it it keeps getting added since we're passing in hard-coded data. Okay, so thanks for watching. I hope this has given you an overview of the use state hook and some common examples. In the next video, we're gonna be looking at use effect. So make sure to hit like and subscribe and share this video with your friends. Thanks for watching.